Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome back to Esther's Song of Praise. I hope that all of you are having an amazing Tuesday. It is a beautiful day outside. I hope that all of you are having an opportunity to, you know, get some fresh air, maybe take a brisk walk, enjoy the beautiful leaves and, you know, the trees and just wherever you are, right? Have a, a chance to get some fresh air. So one thing that I wanted to share is that I recognize that everything is moving toward the digital era, right? And for some people that can be scary and I absolutely get that. But one thing that I've come to realize is that everything is figure outable, okay? Um, someone you know, wrote a book about just you know, us being able to adapt to our surroundings as human beings, you know, and the Lord gives us the ability to not only pray and ask him for wisdom, but also, you know, in Timothy, we're encouraged to study and show ourselves approved, right? To do the work. And so, um, you know, adapting to our new surroundings is so important because I got an email this morning from a very well-known a cell phone carrier. I won't mention them by name, but after months of emails asking, requesting, you know, people to opt into their um, their paperless billing, you know, where they don't have to send you the billing statement or mail it to your house anymore. This morning, they said we will pretty much, you know, force you, enroll you into our paperless billing. Um, and they, of course, listed all the pros of, pros of that. Um, you know, there's not going to be paper waste and et cetera. But basically, it just saves them money, right? To send everything through um, email and through the internet. The internet truly has changed the game on so many levels. It's changed pretty much everything. How people consume media and their news. How people interact with one another. Um Every single industry from Hollywood to businesses, um, I believe that they said, I read a Forbes article recently that said that, um, you know, businesses and office buildings, commercial buildings um, downtown were losing around $800 million from people wanting to work from home. I work from home and it's such a blessing. I cannot tell you, <laughs> um, you know, building my business and I'm also looking to, um, you know, possibly do some consulting work on the side for other companies as well. But it is a blessing to govern your own time, to have that autonomy, to have that agency. And for a long time, I was not able to. I worked as a waitress for many years. You know, I worked in offices for many years. And then I, you know, um, after graduation, I worked in, you know, colleges, schools, universities, teaching. So I completely understand the grind of, you know, clocking in, clocking out of places. I worked in call centers. I've done a whole bunch of jobs. And what that does is it, it teaches you empathy. It teaches you discipline. It teaches you, you know, how to be consistent. But also, once you get to a level um, or a time period, right, where you can govern your own time and you can pretty much write your own ticket. And I'm not there yet, but I'm, I'm working toward it. You know, the Lord has placed it in my heart and I'm, I can see the plan unfolding and I'm really grateful for that. It gives you a new perspective. It gives you a new view, right? A lot of people, and I'm learning, um, I have a, you know, a, a group that I'm a part of they are digital nomads and what they do is you know they take their computers and they pretty much travel the world <clears throat> and so wherever there is wi-fi and there's pretty much internet access whether you have to buy it you know um separately like in a cafe a lot of people are fine with doing that um there's pretty much internet access all over the world and, I, and I'm saying all this to say that while on one hand, I'm appreciative of the, um, the autonomy and agency 
that it provides us, I'm also recognizing, right, that it's ushering in prophecy that's laid out for us in Revelation. So I have not forgot that. And I'm very aware of that. So I also want to get to a place where I can earn enough money to set aside through, um, you know, working online to take that real life income and invest it, invest it into six businesses that are concrete on the ground and that have a 95% success rate, okay? And I actually am building up another channel on entrepreneurship that once that platform is built, I'll link it in the description, but the Lord wants us to be financially stable, okay? I mean, that's what, you know, Proverbs 31, you know, alludes to one of her, her attributes is that she was a businesswoman. She was an entrepreneur. You know, she got up early. She stayed up late. And, you know, it's said that, you know, she spun her, you know, her wool on the spindle, right? She made clothes for her household and her her handmaids and her servants were all well fed and taken care of. But she also sold her, you know, everything that she made on her spindle to the merchants. And then she took that profit and she, you know, she bought a vineyard. And so it's things like that, that even back then, right? Everything in the Proverbs talks about hard work producing profit. And I love that. And so I definitely want to um, inspire people if they, you know, are, you know, willing to listen to, you know, my advice on this journey, right, of being a businesswoman and being an entrepreneur, but also, you know, having the word of God to guide us. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive into his word. I don't want to be too chatty um, with this a uh, book is very short as opposed to the last couple, which were pretty long. So the book of Psalms, chapter 70, let's go ahead and get into his word after we ask the Lord to bless it and give us wisdom from, from the Bible, from his word. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you so much, Lord, for your word, for your wisdom, for your love for us, Father. We ask that you would bless our journey on this earth that we will use the gifts and talents that you've given us father to bring you glory and honor we ask that you would give us wisdom from your book today we thank you and we praise you lord we ask that you would send angels to protect all of our brothers and sisters out there lord god that you will continuously make us more like you that you would just help us to be transformed by your word that we will be renewed day by day morning by morning new mercies we see we thank you we praise you we honor you today, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen. The Book of Psalms, Chapter 70. For the director of music of David, a petition. Hasten, O God, to save me. Come quickly, Lord, to help me. May those who want to take my life be put to shame and confusion. May all who desire my ruin be turned back in disgrace. May those who say to me, ah, Aha, aha, turn back because of their shame. But may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who long for your saving help always say the Lord is great. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come quickly to me, O God. You are my help and my deliverer, Lord. Do not delay. I love that. I love verse five. It says, but as for me, I am poor and needy. Have you ever felt like that? I know I have. Come quickly to me, O oh God. You are my help and my deliverer. Lord, do not delay. The Lord answers our prayers. And sometimes they seem like they may be, you know, taking forever, but his timing is perfect. He loves us so much. The Lord is so great. And I'm so glad that, you know, David knows in his time of trouble to reach out for the Lord, to ask him to hasten, okay, to hurry quickly, Lord God, help me. I love that. And he will. When Peter was drowning, when Jesus asked him to come out on faith and walk on the water, and Peter did, 
and he was doing great. He was walking on the water, just as Jesus said, until he looked around at his surroundings and saw the waves, right? All the distractions. That's the same with you and me, brothers and sisters. When we go out on faith, when the Lord calls us, we'll be doing great. And then we'll look at X, Y, Z, the distractions of the world. We'll start to sink. And what did Peter do? He said, it wasn't a long drawn out prayer. He said, Jesus, save me. And he did. He reached out his hand, pulled him right up out of the water. Brothers and sisters, the Lord loves us so much. He will save us. He loves us so much. Okay, I had to take a, a quick couple drinks of water. My, my voice is going. And I, I apologize. Um, and I mentioned in the last video that, you know, I have a little bit of a cold. But the Lord will, will answer our prayers because we are his children and he loves us. You know, it reminds me of the scripture that says, if a child asks for a piece of bread, you know, what parent would deny them? You know, how much more will the Lord give us gifts, you know, that we that we ask for and it pleases him, but he only gives us things that we're ready for. That's the beauty of the Lord and his wisdom. He knows that some things we ask for, we're not ready for. For example, right? If your 12 year old or 10 year old comes and asks, you know, for a car and they want to drive, right? And you say, no, it's not because you don't love them. It's not because you don't trust them. It's not because anything except they're not developmentally ready to take on the responsibility of a car. But if your 16 year old asks and they have their license, and you're like, okay. So the Lord does the same thing with us. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Have a wonderful day, brothers and sisters. May the Lord bless you. Take care. Goodbye.